Today I'd like to show you a few examples of adding the QZDA SO init monitoring that you've previously set up to your dashboards in Robot Monitor. So let's get started. This is a dashboard that I call production and it's showing a couple of systems Academy and Guinevere, they happen to be IBM I systems. And uh, I'm tracking overall CPU usage, batch CPU usage, auxiliary storage, and so forth. What I'd like to do is add my QZDA SONET CPU monitor to this dashboard. So what I'll do is I'll unlock the dashboard and I'll choose the widget that would be most appropriate to add it to and it would be this top one with the vertical bar. So I'm simply going to double click on that widget you can also right click on the widget and go to properties. Once the properties are displayed, uh, you'll need to find the monitor that you created for QZDA and it will be in this list. So an easy way to uh, look at a subset of what's out there is to choose your filter option and choose CPU utilization or CPU usage all right, and then you'll see all the CPU monitors that you've set up. And uh, I'm going to click on the description column. As you can see, I put a little asterisk at the beginning of the CPU monitor for QZDA SO init and QZDA SS init. And I'd like to add them both into my vertical bars here. So I'm going to select SS init and SO init. And um, Currently they're added to the end of the list. Uh, maybe I might want to move them up a little bit. So let's do that. All right, and then I'll just say OK. And you'll see they've now been added to this vertical bar graph. OK, so this is what's happening right now with my JDBC connections. What if I want a longer time period? Let's look at that. All right, I have another dashboard. It's called Multiple Short-Term Graphs, specific to my Academy system. And uh, I've got things on this, such as overall CPU usage, auxiliary storage, disk I.O., QBatch CPU, for the past several hours. All right, so what I'd like is I want to add QZDA for the past few hours as well down here in the lower right hand corner. So let's unlock the dashboard and click on the plus to add a historical element. And the historical element that we're going to add is a short term history graph. All right, and uh, specifically we're going to look at Academy. Once again, I have to find my monitor type. We know it's a CPU monitor. CPU usage. I'm going to sort by description and there's my SS or SO init monitor and I want four hours. All right there's also some other graph options that you can take for instance to uh, make the chart more of a solid fill underneath. We have a glass mode. You can choose your color set and so forth. I'm going to unselect fill chart. I don't want to show thresholds. And uh, let's go ahead and say OK. Let's see what happens. OK, now I've been collecting this information for a while on my system. And so I've got well more than four hours worth of data. But here it's showing me my spikes from just the past couple of hours that occurred. All right. The final job is to create a dashboard that is specific to JDBC and ODBC data. So let's do that next. OK, under Dashboards, I'm going to show my dashboard list. I'm going to click on the plus sign. I'm going to create one called JDBC, JDBC Monitoring. All right, what you see is a blank slate. Now it's just a matter of clicking on the plus sign and selecting those live elements and historical elements that you would want to uh, show. So 
let's uh, let's do that. I'm going to select certainly my CPU utilization for JDBC secure and unsecure. And let's select a couple others. Okay, I've selected several other metrics around QZDA SO and it. Let's see what it looks like. There we go. So with this, I could size the uh, dashboard widget and position it where I want to. So this particular widget is real-time data. This is what's happening right now in, term, in terms of JDBC. You may want to include more historical data into your dashboard. So let's do that next. Historical elements, short-term history graph. Once again, let's select CPU usage. I'm going to sort on description. I'm going to select QZDA SO init. And I'm going to say, well, let's do uh, eight hours of history on that. All right, the data will populate. There's eight hours of history for QZDA SO init. Uh, let's say I want more history. So I've been running Robot Monitor for maybe a period of days, weeks, months, and I'd like some averages now to show for my CPU utilization around QZDA. So once again, that's a historical element, and that would be a history summary graph. All right, once again, we'll select CPU usage. I will select QZDA SO init. And it's just a matter of selecting how much data that I'd like to see. One month, one day, uh, maybe an entire year. And if I do select a particular month, then I can choose whether I want to see last month or this month and so forth. But let's do one year of data. All right, so here are my monthly averages for the last 12 months. And this will continue to populate as time goes by. If you have any additional questions about any of the robot products, please contact product support. Thank you.